Welcome to Arts, Crafts, and More, which will soon be renamed BDF Show um, in January. And um, and tonight's guest is um, Disney Up, Boiler Up. And before we continue on, let me bring up um, attention. This video is rated PG-13 and is not intended for children under 13. If you are under 13, please do not watch this video. Photos and backgrounds provided by a complimentary of Pixabay and its members and Magic Guides. My partner channels, I want to thank our MGM Family Travel, Teresa, Carol and Life, and Rachel Loves Disney. And go to the live place for um, the TV guide of um, what's streaming on YouTube and and now um, here she is um, Disney up boiler up welcome in hi you want to tell people what what your name is um, in real life my name is Brandy um, tell us about your channel show, anything else pertaining to your stream and blog? Uh, well, I, I don't have any live streams. Um, I have a YouTube channel, which honestly is, was solely created, uh, just for schoolwork. Um, I'm an animation major at Purdue, so I have to post some animation. Um, I have an Etsy shop that I sell my ears and some masks on. And I'll go ahead and share that part up. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm looking at my computer and there's about a 10 second delay between <laughs> between the live and the computer. Hey, yeah. there it is. And I want to welcome Rachel Loves Disney. Um, welcome in. Hi. Hi, Rachel. And there, see. I just had it here. Um, oh, you're all right. Like I said, I'm lacking a little sleep. That Those one-day trips to Disney World are, are rough, especially when you're flying. And then you got masks on there mm -hmm. that you made. Yeah, I got some masks and a few pair of ears. Um, I have a lot more ears. I just really like them, and I don't want to sell them. <laughs> yeah. Actually, for <clears throat> when Indiana was shut down uh, for uh, COVID, um, I think it was about 49 days. So I decided to give myself a challenge to make a new pair of ears every day. So I made 49 pairs of ears during the COVID shutdown. Um, it was after that that I decided maybe I could probably put a couple pairs on Etsy. And um, I started making masks pretty late in the game. Um, so I don't feel like I, I mean, I didn't do it as, as a, a full-time job or anything. Um, so I did, I sold a handful. I mean, don't get me wrong. I sold some, I haven't sold any lately, but I really think the hype has gone down. Uh, most of the masks I sell, I would say were for people that were going to Disney world. Um, cause they're Disney. Uh, I don't, all my fabric is, uh, Disney related, but I have, I have quite a few pair of ears. I got a few, uh, sitting over here. <laughs> I made these ones a couple years ago. Um, Toy Story is definitely by far one of my absolute favorite Disney movies ever in the whole world. Um, definitely the first Toy Story uh, is my favorite. I don't dislike the others, but Toy Story, uh, the original, uh, definitely has my heart. And um, I have a lot of Toy Story clothes. And matter of fact, when I just went to the Magic Kingdom Thursday, I wore my uh, Jesse costume, a little altered. So I wasn't dying in the heat, but 
it was it was a little warm. I won't lie. <laughs> you're you're very talented. Um, about the talented I am is in drawings. Um, you might be able to catch up on um, on replays of my Disney drawings. I'll have to do that. Yeah, I miss a majority of your live streams because I'm I'm at church and I didn't. I didn't go to church today, so I already feel bad. I didn't go to church tonight, but because um, I wanted to make sure I was here when you started. Um, so I, that's why I'm not, um, that's why I don't participate in a lot of your live streams. It just depends on what time I get home. Yeah. Um, I have watched a few of your replays. Yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to share? Uh, as far as? Um that you was going to show it, share um, that was on your computer? Oh, uh, well, I just, uh, I, I didn't know if, what, what you were going to ask me. So I just had some things up um, as far as animation, but I, um, I could talk about my Disney trip if you want. I just went. Um, okay, was, because, because in three years I'll be going to go to, um, Orlando um, for Disney and um, Universal, but um, I'm interested in the Disney um, first off. Sure. Well, I grew up in California. I live in Indiana now. I was born in Indiana, and I went out to California when, in uh, 1980, which was the first time I ever went to Disneyland. And um, so most of my memories are at Disneyland. Um, I didn't actually go to Orlando for the first time until last October, which we went to the Halloween party. And that's when I learned my lesson the hard way not to have a long sleeve costume because it's still in the 90s. <laughs> so uh, my daughter and I uh, just flew out uh, Wednesday evening from Indianapolis and uh, we didn't land um until about eight and we went to magic kingdom we got there fairly early because we ate at chef mickey's at uh, about 7 a.m um when we first got there i don't feel like the crowds were too bad i wasn't sure what to expect um i would definitely recommend to anybody that's going right now or in the next few days if you want to shop uh, you better do it when you first get there because uh, we actually ended up leaving before the park closed um, around six. We were just pretty tired and um, the line for the Emporium was all the way down Main Street. I, I didn't even get to go in. I stopped in the Emporium uh, when I very first got there, but I figured I'd wait to, to purchase whatever I wanted to purchase until I left and I couldn't even get in. I did manage to get into the bakery and got a couple of uh, Rice Krispie treats. Uh, and that's pretty much all I bought. I bought a couple of pins, but I bought them at Sir Mickey's and I was able to get in there. But the the lines for the, the shops, uh, it's kind of just like waiting in the line for a ride. And as the days progressed, or excuse me, as the day progressed, I felt like the lines just got longer and longer. I just, to some aspect, I felt like some of them were actually longer than pre-COVID. Um, again, this is just my one single day experience since the COVID shutdown. Uh, I, I had never seen Small World over an hour, ever. And maybe it's just me, um, but it was, it was well over an hour. When we first got there, technically the park opened at nine. And as far as long as it took me to walk from the front of the park to mine train was already 80 minutes at just a few minutes after nine. So people are still waiting in lines. Uh, I loved it when I saw, you know, Resort TV one and everyone going for five minute wait times. But that was not the case yesterday or excuse me, Thursday at all. Um, the lines were, were long. Uh, I, I was hot <laughs> for Florida weather. I don't think it was. Um, tip, super hot for Florida weather, but it was hot enough to where I felt hot in a mask. And I, I'm not anything against masks. I wear them when I go shopping and whatnot here. Uh, and we, I think Indiana still has a statewide mask mandate, I think. Um, but even in a store that says they don't require them, I still typically wear them. But it, it was, it was, it was hard. 
I think Josh from Resort TV One said it, it was best. He said it was mind over matter. If you want to be there, you'll wear it. And that was basically it. Um, I wanted to be there, so I wore it. And it was, it was, um, it was hot. In the You're mask. just on the other side of Missouri from me. Yeah. Where Where do you live at? I'm in Kansas. Okay. All right. And, yeah, I'm in and Myers and the Mouse is just only three counties away from me. Oh, yeah. I, I heard they were in Cam Kansas. I tried to get them to stop here and pick me up on their way. but So if you're mm -hmm. listening, Myers and the Mouse, thanks a lot for not coming to get me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I live, basically, if you look at a map of Indiana and you put your finger in the center of Indiana and run it all the way west, um, to the Illinois state line. That's about where I live. I live. I don't live very far from the Illinois state line. Right. Okay. Only about 900 people where I live, where my house is. But then I do go to Purdue, um, which is in West Lafayette. I've only been there once this semester because of the way they're doing um, stuff. And I have an apartment there as well that I haven't been in since February, and I'm still paying rent. <laughs> so. But I have one more semester after this one for my bachelor's degree. And yes, I know I'm old, but I did not start college till I was 40, which I went to Indiana Wesleyan University and got associate degree in um, computer information technology. And then I transferred over to Purdue for 3D animation. And um, I, I enjoy it. Um, I, I have some great professors. I actually have a professor that came from Disney and she won an Emmy for Frozen. And she showed us some of her work um, in class as examples. She's very intelligent and I'm very fortunate to have her as a professor. Um, not that I don't have other good professors. Um, one of my favorite professors was uh, from my first year and um, I actually uh, assist for him now. And I, uh, the class I had him for I'm now the teaching assistant for that class so I get to still I get to grade the assignments and look at them and it it's fun to see um, students at the beginning of their journey and it reminds me of where I was at the beginning of my journey four years ago and to see how far I've come along learning things which um, not to say I'm a professional by any means because I have so much to learn still about animation and I would like to continue on a master's level. I'd like to stay at Purdue, but I'm not sure that I'm going to. Um, I'm looking at some other art, like straight art schools for that rather than um, Purdue's very technical. Um, but I think uh, it's a good school and um, I don't know the ranking now. At one point, I thought I read they might've been something like third highest rank for animation, uh, at least in the United States. Um, and visual effects, they have great animation uh, classes, visual effects classes. They actually have a green room um, in the tech building that um, from what I was told, there was only there's only three of them in the world. Um, and it's neat, I've watched people film some stuff in there. Um, I've never filmed anything in there, but. I just put in the boiler um, command um, on Nightbot, so it should bring up the um, link to your um, um, Etsy shop. Okay, uh, and I'm trying to read the, the chat here, um, and Rachel said she loved my outfit. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it. This actually, I had um, last year for the Halloween party, I had made a... Uh, costume where I actually I got a long sleeve shirt I had you know I done the yellow paint I actually sewed on the red um, roping and everything and it was so hot I ended up wearing this which is sold as a pajama shirt <laughs> I wore yeah. a pajama shirt I wore some blue shorts with cowboy boots and, and my Jesse hat and this year I wised up a little bit. I have uh, actually have a Jesse tank top I wore and I got a cow print skirt this time instead of the pants. And I didn't even try the cowboy boots. I just went with some sandals. I didn't wear a wig and I had a smaller hat. But since we just went for one 
day I had a much smaller suitcase, so I had to try to fit everything in my suitcase. <laughs> I can say one thing though, I was kind of disappointed um, at the lack of Halloween decorations. Um, if there's more, I didn't catch them. The only decorations I saw were the the Mickey pumpkin heads on the light, light posts down Main Street. Uh, and last year when we went, oh boy, it was, it was all done up. Um, I understand there's, you know, a lot of stuff going on with COVID. I did catch um, the Goofy Cavalcade and the Princess's Cavalcade actually twice and the villains. And I thought for sure I was going to leave there without seeing Boo to You. And as I was actually walking down Main Street to leave, uh, Boo to You came around. So I did get to see Boo to You. Yeah. Um, I do know um, under Beauty and the Beast, um, Gaston um, wanted Belle, but um, Belle ended up deciding to um, go with Beast instead of Ga Gaston. She was turning him down all the time in, in the movie. You know, I um not a huge fan of Beauty and the Beast. I, I couldn't really tell you why. I've never seen the cartoon um, version. And I um, started to watch the live action one. Um, I do like Emma Watson. Um, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. And um, I just, um, I didn't finish watching it for whatever reason. I have um, very little time to watch anything. I'm usually doing a lot of schoolwork or work work. Um, but I never did finish watching it. Um, it's just not not been one of my personal favorite stories um i couldn't tell you why i'm a huge fan of snow white she is probably one it is a dead tie between marita and snow white for my favorite um my favorite princesses um i think marita has something to do with the red curly hair why i like her so much <laughs> but um i, I really have, like i have read um snow white and rose red um from Grimm's fairy tale, which um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is based on. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, I've, I've I've got an ebook of Grimm's fairy tales that's got Snow White in it. It's got I think Cinderella in it, and I think Beauty and the Beast. I was watching. What was I watching the other day? Oh my gosh, I was watching Andy Griffith's show and he was reading Opie, the original Grimm's um, Beauty and the Beast. Um, I think that's what it was. Yeah, it was Andy Griffith's show. <laughs> yeah, he was um, kind of like quote, quoting it. Um, he yeah. didn't have the book with him. He just um, yep. quoted Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a while back, I was watching an episode of oh, Little House on the Prairie, and Caroline was reading um, Uncle Remus tales to um, the girls, the Br'er Br Rabbit um, and Br'er Br'er story. That's kind of neat that, you know, even back then, it was still, still popular. Yeah, um, Disney um, buys the movie rights from... from um from either the author or um, if the author is no longer living, um, from the publisher that holds the uh, copyrights. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how a lot of it works, honestly, but <sighs> I just hope one day I'll be able to contribute something in animation. Uh, I don't know. I used to think when I first started Purdue that I wanted to work for Disney and I wanted to work for Pixar, and it's not that I don't want to. Um, I didn't think it would bother me to move. Um, I have two adult children that live here in Indiana and I didn't think it would bother me to move. Cause I mean, in animation, you're almost guaranteed to have to go somewhere coastal. I think, um, at least for the animation I'm, you know, wanting to pursue. I mean, animation is in a lot of things. I, um, actually the thing that I would like to specialize is 3d modeling, um, environment modeling and prop modeling. Um, I don't really enjoy character modeling. Um, there's just so many aspects to animation, you don't realize all the different um, things in the pipeline. 
But I used to think I, you know, if I got enough money uh, at a job that I wouldn't mind relocating as long as I could fly back and forth to see my family. But right now with everything that's going on, I, I feel kind of safe here in the Midwest. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I really, I'm not sure. I've done a little bit of freelance work. Uh, and, and that's always out there if you can get the jobs. Um, of course, I don't, you know, it doesn't pay anywhere near um, what working for a big company were, would. But I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go straight to Disney as soon as I graduate. I'm sure some people do. But, you know, I have to have experience. And then I'm going to be like 75 before I ever even get there. So. <laughs> I, I have less than two years before I hit the big six zero. Yeah, I I'm forty six now, so I'm I'm getting there. I'm a little a little late in the game at college, but I guess um, better better late than never. <laughs> My yeah. daughter's actually in college. Um, too. She doesn't go to Purdue. She, uh, she goes to ISU, actually. And uh, if she adjusts her schedule correctly, her and I might actually graduate at the same time. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't talked to her about it a lot lately. But, um, I was wondering how long does it take to make um, make each of, each of those items that you're selling? Oh, like the masks and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess from start to finish for a mask, I mean, you got to cut the fabric. I don't know how some of these ladies were whipping out, you know, 100 masks in an hour. That's not happening on my watch. So, plus I have a really bad vision impairment and uh, a couple other limitations. So it takes me a little bit longer to do some stuff than other people. But, I mean, I, if, I mean, I could probably make one in 20 minutes probably longer. I, I get distracted really easily. So I might sit down to make something and one of the dogs needs out or, oh, I need to drink a water or I need this or that. So I stop. And as for the ears, um, it just depends. I don't, I, I have an idea of for ears and I um, just kind of go into it blindsided. You know, I don't really have a pattern or anything. So I guess it just depends on how much stuff I add whatnot i still feel like i am crooked on this camera <laughs> i keep scooting over further and farther but i um i got a couple pair of ears down here that are on my etsy page i got um, my haunted mansion ears let's see that. I need those yeah, i have a box we can see you now um even better um since you got you in solo there you go and I, uh, let's see, I have my Buzz Lightyear ears, which is also on my Etsy page. And I have, let's see, Aliens. Oh yeah. my gosh, I am absolutely in love with the Alien Remix um, characters. Oh wow! I I I love them. I I got a little alien remix pin. That's Merida. I got a couple of pins, but since I'm buying them secondhand on eBay, the price is a little crazy. Mm -hmm. but, um, I got some Moana ears. I did. Um, a lot of my ears are two sided too. Yeah. I wore these. Um, I took these with me to Florida, but I never really got to wear them because we were going to go to Disney Springs, uh, but it started raining and I, I was so tired. I hadn't slept um, for a while, like well over 24 hours. And then I saw that Josh and Jenna and Maria and Chris and Donna and Nick were all at Fort Wilderness. And I wanted to go over there so bad and see them. And I was just so tired. My daughter was tired. And I mean, the moons were just aligned perfectly to have all my favorite YouTubers in one spot. <laughs> and um, I wanted to go over there, but I had to get up about 4.30 in the morning to get ready for the flight. So I didn't get a chance to go over there. But, um, and we never did make it to Disney Springs. Um, I actually just made these. And I have a tutorial 
for these on on YouTube. Um, I'm in a video editing class and we had to do a tutorial or something. Could have been anything. Could only be two minutes long though. And so I made these. You could probably check that out if you're interested. Um, these are not on my Etsy page. I made these for my next trip and we're going um, probably somewhere around December 15th and we're going to stay for a few days and go to Animal Kingdom. That's why I made these and uh, Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom. I'm, I'm not a big Epcot fan. I know a lot of people like it. I'm just not a big Epcot fan. We're hoping to go to Universal. Um, my daughter and I were actually at the opening day of Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Hollywood, which is considerably smaller than Orlando's. Um, I've never been to the one in Orlando. And at six o'clock in the morning, there were 20,000 people there already and it was a little crowded and there is no Diagon Alley. Um, there's no Gringotts bank ride. Um, they do have a Green, Gringotts ATM, <laughs> which I thought was funny, made me laugh a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I've been wanting to go to Orlando, um, but then you have to have the park hopper pass to get to both. And the park hopper pass is, is not cheap. Um, and if we flew in, our plane wouldn't actually land until almost 11. And then by time, you know, even if we went just straight to the, the park after dropping off luggage, it's going to be probably one before we got in. And I'm not, I'm trying to constitute spending that much money to be in the park just from noon, you know, on. And I'm, I'm, I'm planning on, I'm planning my, mine and my cousin's trip. Um, her daughter her daughter might be down there um, by the time we go. Um, and um, what I was figuring is um, we'll go, we'll go um, to Walt Disney World first. Cool. Those are my and, small world ears. <laughs> yeah. And um, we'll have four full days um, with four parks. Um, at Disney World, and then um, and then we'll go to um, Universal. Hopefully, they'll still have the Harry Potter package where um, where with your hotel stay there um, at Universal, you can get the um, where it comes with the park park hopper pass um, between the two parks for Harry Potter. Cool, that looks furry. Yeah, I've made I made all these. Uh, like I said, I made some during I made them all during the the COVID shutdown. And I am listening to you. I'm just I'm modeling all my ears here, yeah. just in case anyone wants to see them. And and <laughs> my my thought is, if you do go go to Universal, <laughs> if they have the Harry Potter package, take that because it will include um, the Park Hopper Pass to the to um, parks that has um, Harry, Harry Potter in. So um, are you staying at, um, oh, I gotta get something, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay. I'm coming, hold on. Uh, Cause this just made me think of this. So these are my poo ears. I actually got this poo um probably about 42 years ago and he just came with me on my trip and since i was dressed like jesse um i got him a little alien hat <laughs> and he came along with me uh, i figured after 42 years he probably deserved to um find his way to disney <laughs> yeah so uh, sorry to interrupt you but so are you staying then at a universal resort um at disney we'll stay at a We'll probably stay at Pop Century, and then when we go over to Universal, when we check out of Disney, we'll check into a Universal uh, Resort on the day we check out of Disney. I'll have to look at that, the Harry Potter package you said. Yeah. Because actually the um, hotel that we are looking to stay at is the Doubletree um, at Universal. Um, we stayed at a hotel just now. I didn't necessarily care for it. And when I, those are my Kevin ears. Yeah. And the <laughs> Harry Potter package includes um, 
breakfast like at the Leaky Cauldron. Oh wow! And um, there's there's a place in the um, Hogsmead that um, there's a breakfast um, included, and then you you can also get a um, a DVD um, one DVD with where you have to um, get yourself video to to um, to make it look like an album, um, like Harry Potter type pictures where the pictures move. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds neat. That sounds really neat. Of course, I have to have my my boiler up ears. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. We when we went to um the Hollywood, we um ended up getting the fast pass while we were in there because um it was just it was insane. I think the the pass or the the ticket was only um about I think I paid ninety nine dollars for just the entry ticket, um, but then it was an additional. One hundred and thirty-seven dollars for the fast pass, which um, they didn't allow you to use in Ollivander's wand shop, and uh, there was one other Harry Potter ride they wouldn't allow us to use it on. But then we were also allowed to use it um, outside of Wizarding World. Um, so. Um, and the Simpsons, Simpsons land, Springfield's pretty neat. Um, if you, if you've ever seen, seen the, uh, Springfield inside of Universal. Yeah. It's pretty neat. And then there's another thing that I discovered, um, with both the Disney World and, um, Universal is, um, their apps, um, you can be able to see, um, how long of a waiting time the rides has and, um, also, you can see where the rides are at. It does the. Um, does Universal still have the virtual queues? Yeah, I believe so. They still have the virtual queues. Yeah. See, I was hoping that um, Disney would do something like that. Um, Disney only has one, and I think that's on the Rise of the Resistance. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're, 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 I, can say, I can say that I do believe they went above and beyond what they had to do um, safety wise. I never felt really unsafe in the park. Um, but man, it, in the airport, wow, about the only thing they have is a sign that says to wear a mask. Um, I mean, we're like packed like sardines in TSA. And, you know, Disney takes the time to put a sticker everywhere, you know, where you should and shouldn't stand and and whatnot. But um, and then like the Indianapolis airport, so many things are shut down um, there. I, most of all of the food places were shut down, I think. I mean, but generally you're not in there long enough. I don't even like to buy food at the airport because it costs you know, quite a bit more <laughs> than it does outside of the airport. So, yeah, Disneyland, um, I think they have the stickers uh, in place, but um, they're still waiting for the the green light from the governor of California. Yeah, I um, here's some Gryffindor ears for you. Cool. <laughs> um, I've been I, sorted into Gryffindor. Oh yeah, yeah, I I was too. And I even have some martyr map ears. Yeah. I, I like I said, I grew up in California, and I um, I have relatives there. Still, I have two sisters. Actually, well, three actually. And um, the it's just rough out there right now. I think the governor. Yeah, yeah that's about all I'm going to say about that. You know, <laughs> you know, I think it. At, well, at Universal, um, I've I've seen it on their um, app, um, and well, on their page under shopping, that you can um, under the toys Harry Potter, you can um, get the Marauder map 
um, along with a, a wand. And um, what it does is um, the wand is battery operated and um, you can, um, it will show five different um, footstep patterns on the Marauder map. I think I saw that. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Um, I have I have a lot of Harry Potter stuff. I have, hold on, I'll grab it. I have a pretty neat time turner my son gave me a few years ago. Um, I guess I could, it's pretty neat. I like it. I actually, um, fun fact, I sold some Harry Potter masks to a gentleman by the name of Mark Brott who drew the um, 2D art um, of Harry Potter for, I believe, for, for Warner Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, he, um, he's got some excellent drawings. He's a, an excellent artist, if you ever check him out. Um, I was actually, I, I didn't know, but he actually went to, um, to college in Indiana, so. Um. I got my niece um, uh, Harry Harry Potter's one for Christmas. I got it wrapped up um, in in a um, tissue paper and and a Christmas sack for Christmas. I haven't even thought about Christmas. Um, I bought um, I did buy one Christmas present. There's a little girl that I just absolutely love. She's a friend of mine, and I bought her. She loves Rapunzel, so I bought this little Rapunzel uh, pin for her. I thought I'd give it to her for Christmas, but her birthday soon, so I'll probably <laughs> I'll probably give it to her for her birthday. <laughs> yeah, um, the Harry Potter one it's it's non interactive because she won't be able to go to um, Orlando. Uh, she's on oxygen and. They will not allow oxygen tanks on the plane. Oh, wow, because of COVID? Um, no, it's because um, in case of a plane crash, that oxygen will speed up the fire. Oh, wow. So nobody that, or so anybody that has oxygen isn't allowed to fly? I mean, I don't know the um, rules. If, if they have an oxygen tank they can't fly um but if they have one of those um portable um um concentrator then they can yeah i got you so not the straight up old school cylinder tanks right and okay the, and i think maybe it might be because it takes up room yeah they don't give you much room i'll tell you i i, I don't i don't feel like i'm that big and like I was touching both sides of the um, seat. <laughs> I remember when I was a little girl flying, um, the first time I flew, I was six years old and uh, we flew TWA, which I don't even think exists anymore. No, it, but, it went out of business. Yeah, I remember sitting and of course I was smaller, but um, it seemed like the chairs were big and padded and comfy and we're on a 747 in the smoking section, mind you. So it's... <laughs> And they fed you good food, and oh, I remember getting fried chicken and mashed potatoes on the planes when I was a little girl. Me and my mom used to fly back and forth from Indiana and California. Um, just like I said, I was born in Indiana, so I have the majority of my family's here, and then I have just a handful uh, in California. Yeah. And just uh, in case any of my sisters are watching, I just want to say hi. Hi to Boo Boo and hi Lisa and hi April if you happen to be listening and Delilah and Keegan, my niece and nephew. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm kind of excited to go to um, Orlando in three years. Um, it'll be to celebrate my 61st birthday. So well, how um, we'll, we'll be checking in. Disney World on the 5th of June, but my birthday's on the 10th of June. So my birthday will be the checkout of um, Walt Disney World and check into the um, Universal. So I'll be able to have birthday badges at both places and and um, my first visit at both places. 
Well, that's exciting. Yeah, I usually visit um, Disneyland around my birthday time. Um, I didn't get to this year. So um, I, I, I'd just be happy when when they open back up. But I hopefully by the time you go, things will be straightened out and maybe you won't have to wear a mask <laughs> or stand on a sticker. I don't know. I, I kind of thought about it um, and I thought of something and I just kind of feel like it's not going to really go away anytime soon. The masks and the distancing and because, you know, I was standing in TSA thinking, you know, 9-11 was how long ago? And I'm still not allowed to take scissors in my carry on. <laughs> so <laughs> I just don't see anything changing uh, anytime real soon. But we'll see. It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, I just feel like our whole world got turned upside down this year. That's for a lot sure. Of, a lot of things that you can't take on the plane. Um, you could probably like when you get to your destination, just buy buy um, what you're not going to be able to um, take with you, and um, and when and when you're done, just um, kind of like try to put it in the recycling bin. Yeah. Well, I I try not to check a bag. Um, if I don't have to, because um, they cost so much. Um, I mean, I, as far as I, I can think of, Southwest is the only one that gives you a bag included in your in your price. Um, but I have a lot of eye medication, and some of it is in larger than three and a half ounce bottles. <laughs> so it's it's a challenge. Like, oh, I shouldn't do this. So if my eye doctor's watching. Shh. Um, I'll take the big bottle and I'll get some of the little three ounce airline bottles and I'll dump it. I'll have like, you know, four or five of them <laughs> filled up. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's rough. I remember, I remember before 9-11 and it, even as a little girl being able to go into the um, gate and, you know, watch my relatives fly away and I could look out the window and see the airplanes and stuff. And boy, that's all changed. I'll, I can show you, I can show you, um, like, on, with medications, like, people take orally, um, when you're applying. This is what you can put in your, um, carry-on, but you have to open it up so that, um, TSA can see, um, that you're carrying your prescriptions in it. Yeah. And so I think doesn't don't they have to actually be prescribed medications or I don't know for sure. It has to be prescription medicine, and um, you can also carry on a um, small container of um, over the counter um, medicines and, and vitamins and supplements. Yeah, I I've never. Um, I've never tried to take a separate medication bag. Some of them are prescribed, some aren't, um, just because some of them you don't, you know, have to get at the pharmacy. But so far, so good. Uh, but, I think the, the worst thing I've ever lost was a bottle of hairspray because I forgot that I had stuck a full bottle of hairspray in my in my carry on. So, <laughs> but um, but um, if you forget um, like certain remedies like Pepto Bismol or um, or Tylenol or a leave whatever you take you can um it's going to cost more at the resort but um you might um if you're able to stop by the Walmart in Orlando you can get it cheaper there yeah we forgot to bring um like Tums uh last year and I I think I paid seven dollars somewhere for a little like roll of 99 cent tums yeah uh i stayed last year i stayed uh for a little while in the art of animation and for a little while in the music resort uh, my son and his family stayed at art of animation and my daughter stayed at the music resort um so i gotta see a little bit of both uh we decided um to go the cheapest route this time. Um, and probably my daughter has stayed at Disney Springs at the Bee Resort and she said it was really nice. Um, she 
uh, thought about staying there in December. I'm not exactly sure. We'll probably end up staying at a double tree. Double trees are nice. Um, I'm familiar with them. I've stayed at more than one and I do really like them. I don't know. I don't feel like there's a lot of advantage right now for staying at a Disney resort though. I don't, I mean, you can't get the meal plan and then there's the no fast passes. I mean, you have the resort buses, which are nice. Um, I'm not sure I would feel comfortable on a public uh, transportation right now. We took Ubers this last time, but they do get very expensive. Um, I don't mind riding a bus. I just, I think with the, you know, the virus, um, I hope, though, that if we don't end up going to Universal because of the cost, I would like to visit some of the resorts. Yeah. But that would get costly, too, if I did um, Uber. And you can, you know, there's a way to do it on, the, on the, the Disney buses, but you have to go back to a park each time you want to take a bus to a resort. Because I, I it's, unless I'm misunderstanding, I don't think there are buses that go from resort to resort. So that would be a long day, having to go back and wait for another bus and then whatnot. But I would, I, I want to go to the Fort Wilderness. I still kick myself for not going, <laughs> going the other night when everyone was there. Um, I love the Fort Wilderness. I'd like to see the Animal Kingdom Resort. I'd like to see Polynesian. Um, there's a few that I, I'd like to, I'd like to just visit, spend some time walking around and, and looking and, even in the parks, I feel like every time I'm there, I'm rushed. You're running, running to get this, running to get in, you know, a uh, line here. And I, I don't feel like I've ever had a chance to just walk around and, um, you know, enjoy the parks and the scenery. Um, I think next time I go, I just want to try not to think that I have to ride everything and just walk around and look for a while. Um, but you know, I guess it's different. You know, if you have an annual pass, and which I don't, because um, you you can do that. And I feel like when I am there, I've spent so much money going. I want to try to do everything I possibly can, and then I'm absolutely exhausted <laughs> by the time I leave. <laughs> but um, we rode we rode quite a few rides, but we had um, we had some opportunities that a lot of people don't, and we rode. Mine Train and Peter Pan, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jungle Cruise. I rode Aladdin's Magic Carpet. My daughter set that one out. Um, um, Little Mermaid. I had actually never ridden it there. I've ridden it at DCA because I've been to DCA. Um, what else did we ride? I still haven't ever got to ride Dumbo. I'd like to ride Dumbo. We rode um, Space Mountain and Buzz Lightyear. And I have to say the Buzz Lightyear at Disneyland is way better because you can take the guns off and point them. Um, whereas the ones in Disney World are fixed, you know, on the on the thing. So you can't get all the points. But I don't know what else uh, I remember. I'm trying to remember what else we rode. I did not ride Small World. Um, the line was just really long. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping I'm, I'm happy. By then, I'll have um, I'll have a 4K um, 170 degree wide um, camcorder that looks like a GoPro, and um, I want to also get something that um, that's a 360 4K that you can see in all 360 degree angle and see um, the ceiling and the floor. That that camera, the 360, will be perfect for both the Rise of the Resistance and um, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and possibly for um, um, the Alien Swirl Ride. Yeah, I, I've i seen Rise of the Resistance in 360, and I, I think I saw, I've seen uh, Railway. I am looking forward to Railway. I hope they open the pre-show back up, though. Um, last time I went, Rise of the Resistance was not open yet, so I didn't get to go on it. Um, I did go on Smuggler's Run. Um, I still think one of my absolute favorite rides at Hollywood Studio is Slinky Dog. I love it. Um, again, I love Toy Story. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a roller coaster person. 
So, and um, I mean, as far as roller coasters, it's all right. It's not a big, huge thrill ride. I mean, I've never met a roller coaster I wouldn't go on. The bigger, the better. But, you know, Disney isn't necessarily about thrill rides, but the theming is just wonderful. I love Andy's backyard and and everything. And uh, honestly, one of my favorite parts of all of Slinky Dog is at the end when, when Wheezy is singing, You Got a Friend of Me. And it almost just makes me cry because I know that the actor, you know, has passed away. But it's sad that several of them have passed away, actually, in Toy Story. But I'd love to see a, 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 a five. I think it would be perfect. They could, you know, Andy's an adult now because he's my kids' his age. He could have a kid and, you know, Woody could find his way back to Andy's kid. It, it would be a perfect story. And I think, I think it would, I think it would sell, but you know, yeah. maybe if I ever get to work for Disney, I'll yeah. have to suggest it. <laughs> Josh and Josh of uh, resort TV one. Um, he has done, um, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway in um, 4K 360. That's where I saw it then. Yeah, that's where yeah. I saw it. But he did a, 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 a 8K 360 on, on strolling in the park. Okay. Oh, wow. My, I don't... Com my computer can play back, it can only play on the 8K, can only play back the 8K, but, but um, I can. Um, play and edit 4k on my computer okay um i just actually recently got a new computer and it has a 4k screen so it's kind of nice to see some of the the um the videos that they post um i don't think i've seen the 8k one that you talk about i i watch most all of resort tv one stuff i i don't watch all of the relaxing strolls i like his vlog strolls um, I like to hear, you know, narration in the background, and I just like to hear what they have to say. And um, not that his, um, you know, relaxing strolls aren't beautiful and wonderful, um, but as far as as those, I I really enjoy his blog strolls. Yeah, um, so do I. Um, yeah, I just I like the narration. That's just me. I like a lot, a, of, the, a lot of the four Ks and the eight Ks um, is made first is more like streaming um, format and um, whereas if you want to watch it on a TV you have to have either a 4k or an 8k TV but right now um, most people can afford a 4k smart TV but um, it's the wealthy ones that's that's able to get the 8k okay well um, I haven't bought a new TV. I couldn't even tell you. I don't watch my TV. Uh, my TV is on the Western Channel, 24 hours a day for my dogs. They love their grit. And they love John Wayne. And I'm a big John Wayne fan, too, by the way. Um, if I watch anything, it's, um, you know, just on my laptop. It's Prime Video, um, Disney Plus, of course. Um, I actually just watched all the Halloween Towns the other day. And I started watching Twitches last night. And... When I say watch, I have to use that term loosely because most of the time it's just something on in the background or I'm doing something else while I'm watching. But I remember watching Halloween Town. I, they probably came out about the time my kids were old enough to watch them, you know, so I, I like the Halloween Towns. I watched the um, Haunted Mansion movie for the first time a couple of months ago. I had never seen it with Eddie Murphy. It was fun. I liked it. Um, I've been watching the um, Animal Kingdom shows. So. Debbie Reynolds, um, who played in Halloween Town, she died in December of 2018, the day after her daughter, um, Carrie Fisher, passed away. Yeah. Um, did you happen to see Corey Meets World's stream last week with um, Steve's World at the graveyard? No. Yeah, they went uh, out to Glendale um, in Burbank to the cemetery. and um, Oh, I might have took a little glimpse of it. Yeah, they, they saw Carrie Fisher's grave um, and quite a few other um, notable um, Disney celebrities. And, of course, they stopped to see Paul Walker. And uh, I absolutely love Paul Walker. He was one of my favorite actors. He had nothing to do with Disney. But uh, 
fun fact, though, he's actually buried not too far from John Ritter, um, right there in the same cemetery. They also walk past um, the building where Michael Jackson um, is, which you can't get in because it's locked. But they went to, like, Madame Leota's grave, um, Marty Scalar. Uh, actually, there's a, a pretty prestigious cake shop in Indianapolis who did a cake for Marty Scalar. They got some pictures of him up. But yeah, they went to they went to some stuff, and ultimately at the end they went to see uh, Disney's Walt Disney's um, grave. I didn't realize he was cremated. Um, there were so many stories I heard growing up. I, I never really took the time to um, fact check uh, <laughs> which one was true. But yeah, and there he, was something that I um, I've seen um, where um, back when Eisenhower was president of the United States. Um, then Vice President Richard Nixon um, went on tour at um, Disneyland. That was back in the 50s. And he ended up sneaking off with Walt Disney on the monorail and dumped his Secret Service agents. Oh, wow. That's, and that's a good way for a Secret Service agent to get in a lot of trouble with the, um, with the Secretary of Treasury. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's pretty neat. Oh, they also went to Roy Disney's grave. Sadly, his grave was like they actually pulled, cleaned off weeds and stuff. I mean, I would think Roy Disney would have, you know, something nice and it was taken care of, and it just a little flat stone and had some weeds on it. And Steve and Corey pulled uh, some of the weeds off of it, so at least he's clean for a while. <laughs> Yeah. So we got um, three minutes left. Well, and thanks. For I want I want to say thanks to um, all those that watch live and um, or or going to watch um, in replay. Um, remember to comment down below the video. Um, um, hashtag Team Replay if you're watching on a replay and. Um, and um, check out um, um, Disney Up Boiler Up's um, Etsy shop. And um, if you if you have a, um, an account with Etsy, um, go ahead and um, click um, favorite to favorite her um, Etsy shop. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, and thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, and. Um, Oh, I, I ought to take this joke in. Hi, uh, back. I'm BDF. Nice to meet you, back. <laughs> well, who are you yeah. having next week, Keith? Um, next week, I'm going to have um, um, Danny um, Griswold of Griswold Family Vacay along with Don and Will of um, the Hitchhiking Bones. Um, we're going to, um, I'm going to have them Skype me and going through the OBS um, studio. Um, you can see me right now in my OBS camera, uh, which is using the OBS studio. And um, this is going to be um, a first try at um, streaming completely um, via um, OBS studio um, and to see how it works because um, then um, when next year um, which is my 12th anniversary as a member of YouTube and um, but my first year of um, complete my first complete year of streaming would be in June of next year but um, wow but um, I came a long, long way. Um, I um, I have two other channels. Um, um, one is um, um, Nebraska to Nashville. Um, and that that was to, that was um, made for my uncle's um, songwriters group and. I'm the videographer for his songwriters group. So um, 
the the music videos a lot of them that you see on there um is done by me and and then um, otherwise um whatever i didn't do my cousin did and that's and, exciting and you can find it on on um youtube music app um by searching nebraska to the number two nashville all in one word and um if you like um that type of music um they're a member of nsai nashville songwriters association international oh wow um and um this show will be um uh, made um in, will be um, also available in audio um, podcasts um, when, when it's available for me to download and um, and segments out of it will be made into flash briefings in the near okay. future. And flash okay. briefing is on um, Amazon Alexa, which is with um, Amazon Echo. Well, wow, there's just, yeah, once you get on a live stream, you're there for forever aren't you <laughs> yeah all of a sudden you're all over the world <laughs> well and, thanks for having me i appreciate it and thanks for for joining um um to everybody out there um have a magical d evening and a great big beautiful tomorrow bye 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 rachel she's out there still